اللهم صل وسلم على مفتاح ابواب رحمتك واغاثاتك والفرج سيدنا محمد واله وصحبه ومن في نهجهم تحج والانبياء والمرسلين وعلى ما صحبه والملائكه المقربين واجبي عبادك الصالحين وارحمنا واغثنا وفرج عنا والمسلمين وارفع الضيق الحرج رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي الحمد لله we praise our lord subhanahu wa ta'ala in every state we praise our lord subhanahu wa ta'ala in every location we praise our lord subhanahu wa ta'ala in every time Praise our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala in every circumstance. Because our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is worthy of praise. We can never do justice to the praise of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of all creation. So we pray Him to obey His command for us to pray Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us with such blessings, enormous blessings that He has given us and continues to bestow upon us in every single moment, subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the greatest blessings that we have from our Lord Subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he gathers us in these types of gatherings engaged in an act that is pleasing to him subhanahu wa ta'ala act an act that he has commanded us to perform that praises messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima or you who believe send copious prayers and peace upon him upon the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam one of the intentions we should have in such gatherings is to obey the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mashallah tabarakallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us himself inna allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna 'ala an-nabi verily allah and his angels send prayers upon the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam upon the prophet and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the present tense form of the of the verb yusalluna which means it's taking place right now it's taking place in every single moment the angels right now in this moment are sending prayers upon the messenger sallallahu alaihi wa sallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right now is sending prayers upon the messenger sallallahu alaihi wa sallam so when we start sending prayers and peace upon the messenger sallallahu alaihi wa sallam all we're doing is joining in something that's already taking place we're joining in with the angels who are also sending prayers we're joining in with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's already sending prayers upon his beloved sallallahu alaihi wa sallam at the end of Surah Al-Kaf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands His Beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He says to him, قُلْ أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ Allah commands them, He says, say to the people that I am a prophet, I am a human being, just like you. I am revealed to. And there's an important lesson for us in this. Because there's many from amongst the believers who have taken that verse of the Qur'an and I've taken it to mean that there's no distinction, no difference between the Messenger وسلم, and the rest of us. We're human beings. He was a human being. He says it himself. It's right there in the Quran. I'm just a human being like you. Babe, finish the verse. Because we're all in this room right now. We're all human beings. But every one of us is distinct and distinguished from everyone else in the room. There are certain things that we possess by virtue of which we are considered human beings. Whatever those things are, al hayawan and nathik the Arabs will say, the speaking animal. Right. But there are certain things that we possess by virtue of which we are considered human beings. The Messenger وسلم, also has those qualities and traits. But then every one of us also has certain khususiyat, distinguishing qualities. Things that distinguish us from one another. Some people are doctors, some people are pilots, some people clean the streets, some people are teachers, some people are students. That's only in relation to head I mean, like the, the job that a person has. Some people are tall, some people are short, some people have beards, some people don't. Some people have two eyes that work, some people only have one eye, that, whatever it might be. People possess different qualities by which they are differentiated from everybody else. Beauty in the creation of Allah, that infinite beauty, that infinite variety in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's a human being, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, he is, but he's not a human being like the rest of us. Uh, to say that the Messenger وسلم, is just a human being like the rest of us is incorrect. And it's the kind of words, the kind of statement, the kind of utterance that can only come out of a mouth that hasn't looked at the Messenger وسلم, hasn't read the Quran or understood it, hasn't examined the ahadith, the statements of the Messenger hasn't looked at the ahadith describing him because a human being, yes, but utterly unique. 
utterly singular, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, not like anybody else. Now, who else is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell, tell us that he's sending praise upon? In Allah wa malaikatu and his angels. Who else does Allah say that about? Anyone? Show of hands, yani, if anyone can. I can't think of anybody else that Allah says that about. Allah himself sends prayers upon the messenger. The angels send prayers upon the messenger. Who else does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us to send prayers upon? Show of hands. Thought so? Utterly singular, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Utterly unique, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The hadith of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده ووالده والناس أجمعين. One of you doesn't believe until I am more beloved to him than his children, his parents, and the whole of humanity. Who else has said that about themselves? Who else can say that about themselves? Utterly singular, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Utterly unique, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the verse in the Quran. I'm a human being like you. Finish the verse. You I'm revealed to you. Makes him utterly singular, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Utterly unique, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if we want to know the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa one of the best ways to do so, look at what his companions said about him. Look at how the companions behaved around him. Look at how the companions spoke about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Best of generations, according to Kalam Nubuwa, Prophet Sallallahu described them as the best of generations. They are the most beloved to Allah's creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala, after the prophets and the messengers. That's the Sahaba. So how were the Sahaba with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that great generation that was chosen, selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in pre-eternity to be physically present with his beloved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in pre-eternity to gaze upon Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Chosen, selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in pre-eternity to hear directly the voice and the words of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Chosen, selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in pre-eternity to touch the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the hadith of Sayyidina Utbah bin Farqad in the Tabarani. Sayyidina Utbah bin Farqad, let's say Sayyidina Utbah bin Farqad had a beautiful fragrance that used to come off him what we'd call B.O., right? His B.O. was beautiful. Sayyidina Utbah bin Farqad. They say wherever he would walk down the streets, people are like, oh, Utbah, mashallah. Man smelling fine, yani. Sayyidina Utbah had four wives. And the wives of Sayyidina Utbah bin Farqad used to go to lens. They used to put on so much perfume. But then one of his wives, Umm um Asim, she said, it didn't matter how much perfume we put on, he always smelled be better than us. Sayyidina Utbah. So she asked him about it. Now, where's this fragrance come from? How come you smell so beautiful all the time? Sayyidina Utbah says, one time I was sick. I had uh, itchy red spots all over my body. And what happens when you have a sickness? You go see the doctor. So he went to see the doctor. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how did he cure him? He took his blessed hand, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and he blew spittle onto it. And then he took the blessed flesh of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and placed it directly on the back, the flesh of Sayyidina Utbah and on his stomach. Sayyidina Utbah said, from that day forth, that fragrance has been upon me. From that day forward, that fragrance is upon me. Utterly singular, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Utterly unique, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the hadith in Al-Bayhaqi of Sayyidina Ubay bin Ka'b. Sayyidina Ubay bin Ka'b, yani he hears two companions reciting the Qur'an. This one recites the Qur'an, this one recites the same passage of the Qur'an, but recites it differently. Sayyidina Ubay bin Ka'b is like, oh, that's a bit off. Grabs them both, takes them to the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa We're going to get to the bottom of this. The Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, listens to them. Listens to the first of them. Listens to the second of them. Says, Ahsantuma. Says, you've both done beautifully. Sayyidina Ubay bin Ka'b says, when the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that doubt entered into my heart, and it was a doubt which was even greater than the doubt I'd had in my times of Jahiliya, pre-Islam. I started doubting the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He doesn't need to say anything. 
doesn't even need to do anything. The Prophet ﷺ knows what's taking place in the heart of Sayyidina Ubay bin Ka'b. Strikes him in the chest. Takes that blessed hand of his Sallallahu strikes him right there. And he says, Allahumma, Allahumma adhib anhu shaitan. He says, Oh Allah, remove the devil from him. Sayyidina Ubay bin Ka'b says, I began to sweat profusely. Sweat, perspire profusely. وَكَأَنِّي أَنذُرُ إِلَى اللَّهِ فَرَقَى He says, and it's as if I am gazing upon Allah in terror. That's our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Utterly singular, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Utterly unique, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Who else can we mention from the whole of Allah's creation about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and who Allah says it directly to, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ that Allah will not punish them whilst you are amongst them, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whilst he is amongst the people, he's a protection for them, those disbelievers. That's our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is why the Sahaba are so, يعني, so beautiful as a generation. Because proximity to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which let's face it, is one of the reasons why we gather in these gatherings. Proximity to the Messenger وسلم, is safety. Proximity to the Messenger وسلم, is security. Proximity to the Messenger وسلم, is salvation. That's why we praise him وسلم, to fulfill the command of our Lord, yes, subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also to draw closer to his beloved وسلم, because proximity to his beloved is proximity to Allah's mercy. The Messenger وسلم, is the gateway to Allah's mercy. And if we love the Messenger, وسلم, which is a bold claim, that's a big thing to say. And it's not something we should say just yani. Because ask any believer, ask any Muslim, yes, I love the Prophet. وسلم, but our actions have to back that up. Our actions have to back up that statement. As they say in uh, legal circles, right? Extraordinary uh, accusations require extraordinary proof. Right, that claim, I love Muhammad وسلم, that's a big claim, an extraordinary claim, and it requires extraordinary proof and verification. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those people who truly love the Messenger, وسلم, <coughs> truly love him, such that we follow him, such that we obey his command, such that we refrain from that which he's commanded us to refrain from, such that we love to read about him, such that we yearn to be with him. Rabbi Allah, well, we still got a few days left. A few days that we can use, inshallah, 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 as a springboard for the rest of our lives, inshallah ta'ala. We shouldn't think because shaitan's going to start whispering to us, man, you've wasted Rabbi Allah, and you're right at the end now. Let's let it go. Forget about it. You're not good enough. No, we are. Now, we're in these gatherings. We are good enough. We just got to put in a little bit of effort, inshallah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for understanding and tawfiq. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ولعفو منكم